Welcome to the fine line between stupid and clever and part one of the build video for a cedar strip hydrofoil board. Um, I am taking a moment just to let you know that the entire build process that I'm using was derived from this book, The Strip Built Sea Kayak by Nick Shad. S-C-H-A-D-E, -S Shad. This guy is like the Obi-Wan Kenobi of wood boat building, and he has a fabulous YouTube uh, channel, as well as multiple videos on this process. So um, much better production quality and, uh, and fancier boats too. So if you were really interested in learning the details of this build process, this book is about 20 bucks. I think you can get it on Amazon. Definitely worth it. And hey, I encourage you to go out and build a kayak too if you wanted to. Um, another comment I wanted to make is that you will find out if you watch the series of videos that the or there was some initial design flaws when I built the form and got the whole process started that bars bear some correction later on down the line in the build process. And the things that I learned from building this boat the first time, I am definitely going to be applying to the next boat that I build which I anticipate will be a smaller board uh, for kind of an intermediate or advanced rider that'd be more about four feet long instead of the five and a half feet long. So um, you might wanna stay tuned to that for future video series. Anyway, enjoy the first part of the build series. We're gonna talk about building the form and milling your strips for the strip belt process. So starting with the rough proportions of the cruiser board by lift, which is five foot six inches long, I sharpened up a pencil and got out some graph paper and came up with a general design. Knowing that my internal forms needed to be about one foot apart for the five and a half foot board, it needed five forms plus an integral nose piece and a transom or a tail piece. Creating a taper of the hull up to the nose just required making the fifth form just a little bit smaller than the previous forms. I cut all of the forms out of a single piece of two foot by four foot three quarter inch plywood. The initial strips were cut at 3.75 inches wide to indicate the depth of the board. Each form was then cut to length and numbered and based on the proportions from the graph paper and the general design. The board is 28 inches wide at its widest point in the center. I used a simple compass to scribe out half circles on the edge for the lateral profile, so this actually turned out to be the first design error I made on the boat from the beginning. As I later found out in the stripping process, these curves were a little bit too tight for the cedar strips to manage. A single piece of cedar was shaped to match the shape of the nose that I wanted, and I laid out all the boards on a simple table to see how it looked. I decided to cut the transom at a 45 degree angle to add a bit of a design feature for the back of the boat. Following the simple lines of a straight edge, I was able to scribe onto the nose piece the angle that needed to be cut to allow for the hull strips to be smoothly placed. A three quarter inch steel conduit pipe for $5 at Home Depot serves as the strong back that will hold all of the forms together. I used a one inch spade bit to drill a hole in each of the forms where the strong back pole is threaded through. In order to make connections for the nose piece and the transom, a three quarter inch dowel was trimmed to the distance that I needed and then whittled on the base so that it could be tapped into the end of the conduit pipe. For the transom, the dowel was cut at a 45 degree angle so it would marry up nicely and then the transom could be fit into the form. I measured and marked the one foot spacing of each of the forms with a red sharpie on the conduit pole. And then measured the amount of dowel needed to attach the nose to get the five foot six inch length. In the end I had to do a little clever woodworking with some scrap wood to attach the nose piece so that it would accommodate the angle of the taper of the front of the board. Bending a test strip over the front of the board, I immediately found out I needed to trim some of the wood back from the attachment. I cut 45 degree angles in the transom piece to accommodate the angle that I wanted. And then I used another piece of test wood to test the bend over the form to make sure I had a good fit. Okay, I've got my form built. And before I start laying down the strips, I thought I'd explain it a little bit. Um, this is 
a uh, five and a half foot design, uh, similar to that of the cruiser version of the lift board. It is about, the internal um, dimensions are three and three quarter inches deep. Uh, so that'll give me about a 95 millimeter um, internal depth to the board. Uh, the widest portion is 28 inches. Um, the forms that I made were uh, made out of three quarter inch sanded plywood. Uh, one two foot by four foot uh, section of that was more than enough plywood to make it all. Um, the rear piece, or what I call the transom, and also the nose piece are uh, from cedar, and those are going to be, uh, those are forms, but those are going to be left in the board. Uh, so the nose will have uh, cedar strips wrapping around it, and it'll become an internal part of the board. Uh, the transom will be the external part of the transom um, that will be visible from the outside of the board. So um, the design was simplified by keeping the deck totally flat. So right now you're looking at uh, the top of the boat, it's as if it was sitting on its top right now with the bottom of the boat. I did build into the forms a taper in the front of the board, a uh, slight taper in the back of the board for like the last nine inches. And for the last uh, 20 or 24 inches, there's a um, taper in the front of the board. Uh, I used a single uh, three quarter inch conduit pipe uh, running through one inch uh, holes in the forms just to keep things straight. Um, this is uh, sitting on a six foot uh, plain old folding work table. So the nice thing about building this, unlike building a kayak or a canoe, is that uh, with its small size and with a flat deck, uh, you can actually build it right on top of the tabletop instead of building a massive strong deck that requires uh, everything to be completely rigid and straightened out and um, really clean. Now, when I lay my first uh, shear strips on the side, those are going to be very, very important. I'm going to take my time doing that. Um, they will not be glued to anything else. They'll just be stapled to the forms, except they'll be glued to the, the transom and the nose. Um, but if I don't get those perfectly placed, then it could knock the form out of whack and uh, make things look a little asymmetrical down the line. So these are initial boards I selected uh, for stripping and milling purposes. Um, they've got a minimum of knots in them, which is good because uh, strips tend to break at where knots are. I've got one um, eight by six cedar piece. Uh, I wanted a couple of longer strips, especially for along the sides of the boat where they're gonna be the longest. And then this is a 12 foot board cut in half. Um, that should uh, give me plenty of strips. I don't know if it'll be enough to finish the whole boat, but it's enough to get me started with. So I've got my uh, table saw set up here, set at a quarter of an inch, and we're just gonna make a lot of sawdust. So here's a healthy comparison. There's um, one of the one by eight by six uh, boards in comparison to how many strips I got of it. I got 22 strips out of the one half of the 12 foot board. Um, and at least 20 of them are ex are usable for the full length of the six feet. So um, you can see that uh, with two of these boards, uh, two 12 foot boards, looking at about a hundred bucks of lumber is all you're really gonna need to build uh, an effective board. So now with some cedar strips to play with, I was able to set the shear strips along the sides of the, of the form, uh, gluing them and securing them firmly to the nose and the transom. But once these were set with staples in the forms, then the form became rigid and uh, ready for the regular stripping process. Okay, so I got the shear strips on, which went on pretty easily. Um, I did have to sink a couple of finish nails in the transom at the back because that's where the most uh, tension was on those. Uh, but now the form is pretty solid and uh, stays in place, uh, so it's easy to move around. Um, I am next going to start all of the uh, flat horizontal pieces from the nose, starting from the middle of the nose out on each side and then gluing on the transom. So these should be just a, a probably a good, I don't know, foot and a half full of strips that should go on really quick. 
Okay, that's it for part one. Stay tuned for part two. Should be coming up real soon where we get into the stripping of the form and moving forward. If you like the video, please leave comments. If you didn't like the video and you hate my guts, let me know too. Why not? Um, anyway, look forward to seeing you next time on Stupid and Clever.